Hey, welcome to the Campbell Museum's collection storage. All the boxes and drawers contain endless stories, and today we'll explore the secret life of one of our boxes. So join me as I explore what's in the box and make sure that each item is preserved for generations to come. This is part two of three, so please check out our other videos to see the rest of the episode and explore the other items in this box. This is a Fuller Brushman letter opener, or letter knife, that would have been used to open all those letters that were so beautifully inked using the Scrip ink in our last video. Starting in the late 1950s, the company gave away letter openers like this one as a promotional item. In the heyday of door-to-door -door salesmen, none was better known than the Fuller Brushman. The company was founded by Alfred Fuller in 1906 and is still in business today. They sell, well, brushes. Imagine a household need for a brush and they make it. When Mr. Fuller's customers expressed a need for a new kind of brush, he marked it down. He noted which brushes sold well and which ones didn't. Soon, there were thousands of Fuller brushmen selling door to door, but the secret to Fuller's success was not the number of salesmen. It was the pledge that every salesman had to promise. I will be courteous, I will be kind, I will be sincere, I will be helpful. I'll admit, I had never heard of Fuller brushes, but let's blame that on my youth. In 1922, the Saturday Evening Post coined the phrase, Fuller Brush Man and this iconic character of American life appeared in comic strips like Blondie and Mickey Mouse. In the Walt Disney film, The Three Little Pigs, there is a scene in which the wolf poses as a Fuller Brush Man. By 1950, the Fuller Brush Salesman was such a cultural icon that a movie called The Fuller Brush Girl, starring Lucille Ball, was released. And that was the second movie about a Fuller Brush salesperson. Even as door-to-door -door salesmen became less and less common, for Fuller Brush, all sales were door-to-door -door until 1985. I feel like this aphorism, which is claimed to be a favorite of Fuller's, is emblematic of his success. The word American terminates in I can. Cue the bald eagle. <laughs> As a general store, Genassi's not only sold home goods, but also farming goods. Many Campbellites had their own chickens. There were also two larger hatcheries in the area. The Mission Hatchery, that was located on Winchester Boulevard between Rincon Avenue and Cherry Lane, and the Meridian Hatchery, which location I'm a little unclear on. While I do not know what techniques were used in these hatcheries, the pictures we do have do not show the chickens wearing chicken blinders like the artifact we have here, which are not to be confused with chicken glasses. Blinders, like the ones we have in our box, are opaque and prevent forward vision, whereas chicken glasses have transparent lenses. Both blinders and glasses are used to reduce the accuracy of pecking at the feathers or body of another bird. Unfortunately, chickens are prone to pecking at each other. Both methods attach to the beak. With this model, using a pin to pierce the nasal septum and hold the device in position. This is often used as an alternative to beak trimming, but is harmful to the birds. Today's blinders are made of plastic, not aluminum, and they clip on instead of using a pin like this one. Thanks for watching part two of What's in the Box. I hope you'll watch part three where we explore the final item in this box and have a behind the scenes look at how we care for all these items.